Hello to the chicos and the chicas. Today I'm going to go back a little bit to computer chess. A funny story occurred a couple of days ago and I thought I would share it with you, especially because uh, it is a rare occasion when I would like to blow my own trumpet a little bit. So um, the computer championship, uh, also known as TCEC, um, um, has been on for ages and uh, from what I understand it's uh, very beautifully reported upon by the marvelous Grandmaster Matthew Sedler. You get to check out the games and uh, Grandmaster Sedler regularly um, publishes tweets and um, videos about uh, the ongoing battles between the engines and quite frankly um, to many it's uh, it's a little bit too much and too heavy but sometimes there are some absolute bangers between those engines um, that you really really want to check out and besides um, Grandmaster Sadler does a fabulous job at uh, trying to bring these really deep computer ideas closer to us mere mortals uh, in particular on his YouTube channel which I'm going to link below uh, in case you would like to check out uh, his um, channel which is full of uh, computer game analysis I really recommend you to do so so there was this game and as I'm going to enter the game I will tell you the story alongside it too so this is a game between uh, Stockfish playing with white uh, white against a uh, other engine called I think Stew Flace, which apparently is some kind of a food or yeah I didn't know that until I googled it and um, it is a very wild Sicilian which uh, is quite a bold choice as far as I'm concerned to go for uh, as an engine because uh, one slip here and you are mated and uh, Stockfish is not going to hold back so Stockfish goes for broke h4 h5 take take castles castles and it feels like literally a scenario from a video of mine a couple of weeks ago when i did the how to pawn storm video so i guess that stockfish must have somehow checked out uh, that video of mine or at least the the programmers of um of stockfish because uh, look what it does g6 knight c5 h6 mm, that is a boom -shki. That is definitely a Boomski beautiful motif. Um, takes, takes, and now we have got the uh, semi-open fast for the rooks to uh, play along. Rook f7, bishop d4. By the way, if you feed this to your leeches uh, stockfish, which is what I'm doing right now, the, the evaluation of the position, at least on lower depth, is very, very close to equal. And funnily enough, and this is where the story gets real good, um, this game was observed by Leela Chess as well, and Leela's evaluation was uh, dead draw as well. And that's exactly how this story started, because what happened was, was that when the game got to this stage, Grandmaster Sedler um, posted a tweet, which I shall show you right now, in which he said something along the lines, okay, let's see if Twitter can, go if Twitter can do better than Leela. So the initial position is this, um, and then he posted this, and shortly after he posted the question, where he suggested that after rook h7, Leela reckons it's a draw, but Stockfish thinks it's much better for white. And uh, there is a, a bit of an additional tweet he's saying, also, uh, I also have to warn you that you will be searched for illegal devices if you find a solution. Now, I may or may not have been, at the time of reading this tweet, in the smallest room of the household, looking through my chest Twitter, and I looked at the position very briefly, and I thought, um, hang on, if I play rook h7, then uh, I'm going to be quite good here, because the idea being, so I'm going to set up the position, so check. By the way, king g7 loses beautifully, I will show you that in a second. So check, check, takes, takes, here, um, ed4, no, it's my turn, never mind. Uh, oh, bishop h5, excuse me, e d4. And so the problem here is, is that if we go check, then the king slips away via e5. Uh, and it's just bonkers, but there is no mate here. Because the rook is covering f5. And if we take the rook, there is a bishop g5 check. Which opens up the discovery towards the queen on f7 and the rook drops. So that doesn't work. And also f4 doesn't work because of the devious rook g7. And... Um, Black might have even the better chances, I think, after bishop takes g6. There is a, um, a miraculous perpetual check here with the queen, we check, check down here. But long story short, none of these do the job. 
And uh, I looked at it, and the first idea that occurred to me was rook h7, and then I realized that actually it works if takes, because then there is a mate here. And I actually didn't calculate anything more, I also saw the fact that now my threat of queen g6 and queen f4 are uh, very, very powerful. So I typed up uh, the tweet response, which went along the lines of, uh, I only looked on my phone for 30 seconds, so it's probably utter garbage, but what about rook e7? And uh, Mr. Sadler goes, comes back at me with that, your phone will now be confiscated for forensic analysis. <laughs> this does hit, in, hit indeed all the spots. And actually, because of I want you to be aware of his channel, I'm going to show you a little bit uh, of what he had to say about this situation, which is also my way to blow my trumpet, so ch check this out. Life with two extra pieces. Um, and um, actually, uh, international master Andras Tov uh, suggested it and found the correct move. Um, but it's an absolutely amazing one. You can pause the video uh, if you don't want to know the answer. Uh, the answer here is the incredible move, um, Rook H7. <coughs> Boomski! Boomski! That is a boomski. So yeah, I um, I got that one right. Uh, I. I guess the only comment I need to add to that is that even a, bro a broken clock is uh, right twice a day. So that was my time to shine and uh, that was my time for glory. Um, let's have a look at the variations because they are nothing short of insane. And I'm going to go back a little bit um, all the way actually to rook takes h7. So in the game for the record rook takes g7 was played and Stockfish managed to convert after a very very long game. So. The variations that interest are beginning with king h7. Now, after check, if they don't take, but they play king uh, g8 right away, then we have got the marvelous check, check, king f6, and queen f4, check. This is a motif. So, that's just to keep in mind, but the correct move, of course, is bishop h5. And now, if the rook goes sideways, then we have this marvelous mate with queen f4, check, king e6. And bishop g4 mate. Wowzers! That is absolute bonker town. Um, so rook takes h7, king takes h7, check. So the king had to capture. And now we went check, rook g1. Oh no, actually, sorry, my bad. That's a different variation. No, it didn't have to capture. Uh, the, but let's have a look at this line because that is equally enticing. That is another mate like that. Whoa! That was really cool. So, the king had to go back to g8 in order to lure the rook forward. Then king takes g7, then check, then king f6, then uh, bishop h5, excuse me, e d4. Uh, and this is where the glory comes with uh, rook h7. Now, I looked at uh, a few variations to celebrate my... Uh, my brilliant idea, and of course, I saw absolutely none of what the engine has to show. My favorite variation runs with uh, rook c f8. No, it doesn't. Wait. Um, yeah, it does. Wait a second. I forgot to enter this line. So it went here, here, here. No, this wasn't it. What was my favorite line here? Oh, that's right. It was bishop e4. That's the one. Check this out. This is absolute mint. Um, bishop takes e4, covering g6, so it makes perfect sense. Um, queen f4 check. Bishop f5. Bishop takes g6. Oh, my word. Check that out. And if king takes g6, then we have an insane mate on h6. And otherwise, we are threatening to mow down the whole board. And here the engine went into insane depths. Actually, I found this variation now with knight d3 check. I'm like, why are you doing that, dude? And then I realized that the reason why they need to do this is so that after takes takes, check here. Now we do a ring a ring a rosy. Check, check, check. In this position, if they hadn't done the knight check, so now I'm going to backpedal all the way and I will show you this is absolutely insane. So if they take right away, then we have check, takes, check, 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 check. And the end of the ring rosy, we have a mate in three now with knight e5. That is amazing. It's mate in two here or mate in three here. So what does the knight check do? It pins the knight. Like, you just have to admire how amazingly well these engines play. So um, the point is, is that here we need to throw in knight d3 check. CD. And then do the ringer rosy. 
because now I don't have the night move. What's the computer solution to the problem? That's okay, I can sidestep a pin. There you go. And of course, I had no idea again, like, what on earth is that move? Because it just hangs the night. But the point is, the two point capturing the night, we go check here, check here, and here. And this idea wouldn't have worked earlier because of the bishop g5 check. And so the sidestep is not only to get out of the pin, but also to put the king on a light square so that um, so that uh, we can't be checked. Needless to say that the story is not over yet because after check, we have to go here. And when they promote tonight, we go to king f1. And now the mate is unstoppable. There is a last round of ring of roses to be done. But after queen f4, um, check here, we have got a mate. Nope. Wait, what? did I miss a mate here? Yeah, I did miss a mate. <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> oh, I've got only one thing to ask, and that is this. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? I mean, come on! What a checkmate! Absolute insanity, and all of this is coming from. The rook h7 idea, uh, which um, is um, a really, really great move here instead of f4, which it was my proposed move. I saw none of these lines that I showed you. The only thing I saw was that capture was not good. And I also saw that the mate was threatened and that was it. So that's my very short-lived uh, glory, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, uh, do yourself a favor, check out uh, Grandmaster Matthew Sadler's channel. It is an absolute goldmine and the guy is a legend. Please make sure you follow him on Twitter too. Um, this is going to be it for me for now. Please don't forget to sub, to like, to comment and to super like. And I will be back with the next video, which is going to be a banger, by the way. Um, I will be back soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.